Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. This is a very special uh, video. It's the first in a series on Medicare, uh, insurance, health care. Uh, and we've got a very special guest uh, for this series. So we hope you not only watch this, uh, introducing him, but watch the whole series. Uh, you'll see them weekly. And eventually, when they're all done, um, you can go to our website, uh, celebratingact2.com, and hit the playlist, and you'll see all of them together. It's about Medicare, really, is the basis of this, because that's something that everybody is is uh, is going to need and want to know about, and God knows it's complicated. So uh, Art has discovered a gentleman who is an expert in the field, and we're we're both very proud to be able to present him in this series of videos. Yeah, the uh, uh, fellow we're going to speak to today is Aaron Zolberg, Broad, Zolbrod, uh, who I met a couple of weeks ago. Sounds like an old friend, Art. <laughs> uh, he's not old. We're the old friends. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in any event, uh, uh, I met him a couple of weeks ago uh, at a uh, online uh, uh, Technical technology uh, uh, conference that I belong to, a Pittsburgh uh, Innovation Technology uh, Conference. And uh, he's a licensed uh, insurance agent. And he was there talking about a wide range of uh, insurance uh, uh, ac activities uh, from different people, new entrepreneurs, and so on and so forth. So he's a, he's a uh, certified uh, uh, insurance agent who specializes in the medical field. And uh, uh, he gave a, a, a bit on Medicare. And I, actually understand a lot about Medicare and everything. But he showed me that I only scratch the surface in this ever-changing field. So without oh, further yeah. ado, let's meet Aaron Zolbrod. And uh, there you go, Art. Thanks, Aaron. You know, I am I am in Act Two. So I'm in Act Two now. So I'm not you know you I'm are. with you. Guys. You don't look it. You need more data. Well the Act Two is fifty and older, is that right? We're, yeah, we're in but, Act but your Act Two, your Act Two, your personal Act Two is really as a uh, uh, as a uh, fisherman, unlicensed fisherman, is that correct? I'm not, well, I don't know about license, but uh, we're working on that. Though. We're working on getting our captain's license. My son okay. and I are actually. And, and, well, anyway, Aaron, um, you Aaron you can you give a little bit of your background? Your... Yeah, I'm sorry. What was John? What were you saying? I was going to say you don't have to be over fifty to be an expert in Medicare. No, you do not. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, and I'm sorry, Art. Go ahead. No. So, Eddie, just give us a little bit of your background, how you got into this, and uh, 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 then let's get into the first uh, subject. Well, I am going to age myself a little bit because I got into this because about 16 years ago, um, I was getting out of, I've been in sales most of my life, and I was getting out of uh, the car business. I ran big car dealerships, um, huge car dealerships in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it was 60, 70 hour weeks, and I just wanted to change careers. I had moved back from New Mexico to Pennsylvania. And I actually just put my resume on Monster and was called by a gentleman who had a health insurance and Medicare agency. And he was pitching me on the idea of coming to work with him and said, hey, there's 40, at the time there were 40 million people who didn't have any insurance and about another 40 million on Medicare. And you know, I thought to myself, wow, that's 80 million people to market to. That sounds like a pretty good opportunity. And so I kind of jumped in. Um, they trained me really well um, on the ins and outs of health insurance and Medicare. And then they put me on the road at the time. And still to this day, a lot of this is done out of trunks of cars. It's done in people's living rooms, their dining room tables, their kitchen tables. And a couple things that didn't feel right to me. And number two, the product they were offering they had me selling just one product. And when you're just selling one, one particular company's product, that's called you're a captive agent. And that you're kind of, the, the pressure then becomes because we're paid on commission that you're, you're, you're kind of pushing people into one product. And this product wasn't competitive. And the first rule of sales is, if you don't believe in what you're pitching or selling, you're not gonna be successful. And I recognized that immediately and said, no, I can't work for this company. I can't sell this product. But I did realize immediately what a huge need there was um, for someone to explain it to people. Like you said it, John, Art, you said it. So confusing, um, so, so much change is going on that I said, there is a need for this. And, and really 
what struck me was I looked around the insurance landscape and I said, why is there a property and casualty, you know, auto and home insurance company on every corner in every town, right? Like in, I'm from a little town called Connsville, 7,000 people. There's like seven insurance agents, agencies, property and casualty within like 10 blocks of me. Mm, and I said, why yeah. is there not one single person that has a brick and mortar location for health insurance and Medicare insurance? We all need it. Yeah. And I just couldn't believe it. And I said, I'm going to open up a brick and mortar building. People told me I was nuts. And I, again, I knew there was a market for it. I literally hung my 15 years ago, April 1st, we, we opened um, the health insurance store in 2008. Guys, I hung my sign that had my phone number on it. And five minutes later, I got a phone call. Somebody inquiring <laughs> about that is, that is a true story. And I said to myself, my gosh, this is going to work. Yeah. Um, and I started doing a radio show and the phone started to ring. When I started this business 15 years ago, it was me, my dog. I had one desk, one telephone, a computer, one of those hundred dollar print scan fax machines. Um, and 15 years later, guys, the rest is history. We have three locations. Um, there's 13 counting myself. There's 13 of us, um, at the health insurance store. Uh, we currently have 14,000 active clients and we probably in 15 years advised well over 20,000 to 25,000 people on, you know, what is the best way to insure themselves, how to protect themselves, and then, you know, take care of them. Um, once they become clients, making sure that if they have any issues, questions, concerned that we're there as a, as a backup for that. Aaron, this is uh, a, could you um, could you um, uh, give us a uh, an idea in this first episode of the state of medical insurance and medical care and the uh, kind of insurance that you address to help fill in the the holes for people? Yeah. So what what's great about what I do and, and why I needed to make that move away from being a captive agent is I wanted to be a broker. So I wanted people to be able to come in. And we could be a one stop shop. They could tell me what their needs are, their health issues are, their budgets are, and then we could fit them in, you know, into that slot where they're needed to be. So, so as a broker, we're contracted with, you know, 20 or 30 companies and every competitive company in the market. So the beauty is we're not pressuring anybody that we're, we're, we're more tour guides, we're more problem solvers um, to, to find people solutions. Um, for all their healthcare needs. And that's on the bottom of our, you know, on our window, providing solutions for all your healthcare, you know, health insurance needs. Um, to, to go back to art, the state of, of our health insurance um, and healthcare in this country, I think it's an absolute mess. Um, I, 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 I'm not a proponent of socialized medicine like they have in Canada and France and Italy, because that does, in my opinion, lead to rationing of, the, of care. But, you know, we, don't have a good system right now. I consider we have what's called a sick care system, right? Where, where, where most doctors and hospitals are paid on a fee for service. They make more money, the more surgeries they perform, the more MRIs they, they, you know, they give, the more um, hospitalizations, the more money they make, right? There's yeah. no money in keeping people from the hospital. They make their money on, you know, your sickness. Um, and I think that's a problem. Um, I don't know how we move away from that, but, you know, I don't think we have a healthcare system. I think we have a sick care system. One of the problems with our system, and I'm going to talk about good stuff. I promise you, it's not all, it's not all bad, but you know, one of the problems in this industry is we don't know what we're going to pay until after the service has been performed. How crazy is that? Right. Yeah. Could you imagine taking your car to a body, to an auto repair shop, knowing, you know, you're hearing squeaky brakes or grinding and you take it into the shop and say, well, how much it's going to cost? How much is it going to be? And the, and, the, and the mechanic says, ah, I'll tell you when we're done. <laughs> right? And you don't know whether it's going to be 150 or, 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 or 2,600. Right. And that's the system we have right now. We don't know what we're going to pay until we wake up and get a bill six weeks later. And, and you know, to me, that's just insane. Um, secondly... The biggest mess, in my opinion, is our prescription drugs um, system in this country. And we're going to talk about this later in another episode, too. But, um, you know, Big Pharma, in my opinion, practically runs this company. Um, and, you know, in the United States, we pay up, up to a thousand percent more for brand name drugs than they do in any other country right. in, in, in the world. Right. 
And the U.S. is basically subsidizing the world's lower drug costs. And that's not right. Um, you know, I don't get that. Um, I don't get why, why we stand for it. Um, it absolutely causes hardships for business owners, for taxpayers, for employees, um, for employers um, in higher premiums for benefits. Um, and I got to tell you, what drives me nuts is reform. You know, we, we hear all this, oh, we're lowering prescription drug costs. You're, you're hearing, you know, politicians brag about that. That's a lie. That's totally misleading. We've lowered the costs for what people pay maybe in a copay but we're not lowering the retail costs. Those are still ridiculously high. Um, and reform could be very simple. Our, our, our politicians, Congress get together and say, we're gonna have a bill that says drug manufacturers must sell their prescriptions to pharmacies and to wholesalers at the same prices they do in every other country. That's how simple it could be. It's yeah. that simple, yeah. um, but it's not happening. Um, let me give you the one good news or the one great thing about our healthcare here. We have the best technology in the world. So every opportunity I get to meet people from Europe or Canada, I want to ask them questions about, you know, what do you think of your system and what they, what I've been told, and I'll never forget, I, I flew on a plane with a whole group of Canadians, was that we like our way we get our insurance better, but you guys have the far superior technology and access to care. And they went on to tell me that they pointed to their friend that was sitting across the aisle and said he had a heart attack last year in Florida and lived. And if he'd have had that same heart attack in Canada, he'd have died. Wow. So, you know, that is the good news that, that, that you know, access to care here for now in many areas is still excellent and access to technology, you know, in the latest and greatest is better here than it is in most countries. So, you know, we do have that to say. Now, I'm a little concerned about where that's going. We are, you know, in a lot of areas, like my mom still lives in Albuquerque. They have a terrible shortage of doctors right now for, for several reasons. Um, but, you know, in Pittsburgh, in, in one of Art's good friends, I think you know him too, John, with Paul. Yeah. Um, you know, he's in Pittsburgh. He just, he just had surgery from world-class, from a world-class surgeon. You know, I can call right now and call UPMC, which is our biggest provider, and see an orthopedist tomorrow. Um, so that's great. But in other areas, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Mm. Well, Aaron, this is, uh, this is a great overview for our first video because you've really touched on everything. You've touched on healthcare, you've touched on drugs, you've touched on Medicare, and, and that's what we can look forward to. Am I correct? It's as we go through these yeah. videos, however we many we do. You know, it's very important for me to, to explain these things, like the, the concerns I have, because I don't want ever want people to come in and thinking I'm doing one of these shows to try to sell something. You know, don't get me wrong. I like making a good living, um, but I really enjoy helping people and giving this, you know, giving this information out. And, you know, insurance is a health insurance is a necessary evil. I mean, we have to have it. Yeah, um, you bet. You know, and, and again, I'm not a proponent of socialized medicine at all. Um, and so we do have to get health insurance, uh, yeah. you know, and, and sometimes I'm torn on the private, you know, the way on private versus, you know, state run or, or federal run. Um, but it is necessary evil. And that's where, where I come in and I have made my living um, wading through this confusion. I tell people all the time, as soon as it becomes easy to understand, I'm out of business and, <laughs> you know, I'll have to go do something else and I will. But while it's confusing, uh, I mean, it's job security for sure. Uh, one well, last uh, thing before we go on to the next episode is that um, I, uh, you were talking about the fact that, because I know that you were speaking at the group that I saw to a lot of people who could not possibly use you uh, as an agent because you're licensed in about 20 states, mostly up and down the East Coast, California, some others, uh, getyourbestplan.com. And this information will be in every episode because even if uh, uh, you're not licensed in their area, you've already told uh, me uh, and this other group we were with, have somebody contact you and, and you'll find somebody for them to go speak to who knows this yes, stuff. We can at least, if we're not licensed in your state or you know, we can't help you get the plan that works best for you in your state, we'll tell you, hey, you know, I'm not contracted to, to, for this HMO in your state, but this looks like it's the way for you to go. 
or even if you need Affordable Care Act. Um, you know, I'm not licensed in 20 states to do that, but we'll get online and pick you out a plan and, and, and get you in the right direction and just give you sound advice, um, sound advice on, on, on what your best bet is. I mean, part of my mission statement, guys, you know, it's still hanging up in our office and on our website, and I wrote this 15 years ago, is we never give advice based on our paycheck that we always give advice based on what's best for that person that's sitting at the other side of the desk on the other end of the phone or in a Zoom meeting or Skype meeting like we're doing now. And I'd probably say 50% of the time with people we meet, our advice is something for them to do something that we don't gonna, we're not going to get a commission for, that they have access to a plan through their company they work for or retired from um, or spouse or their employer that's, that's better than what we can do. So. Um, that that's that's what you're always going to get from us. Great, great. Now, I know people will want to contact you, but meanwhile, tell us what you want to cover in the next video. Um, so delve we're into talk, Medicare. Yeah, we're going to dive right into Medicare. We're going to talk about the history of Medicare, you know, which is parts A and B. We're going to talk about what's really confusing to people are C and D. So you know, there's A, yeah, B, yeah. C, D. You know, and it makes people you know sometimes frustrated. They're going to say some other four letter words. Uh, you know, when trying to understand it all. So we're going to get into just a basic overview of that. As we move through the series, we're going to talk about the two types of Medicare plans, the pros and cons um, of those, uh, the, you know, trap doors and pitfalls. Um, you know, and we're going to talk about Joe Namath um, and, you know, <laughs> those crazy commercials we see on TV that we're all yeah. sick of that I can't stand. Um, we're going to talk about health insurance for people who aren't on Medicare in one of the uh, one of the segments, Good. long long term care, um, and we're going to talk about the future of Medicare and Social Security. Uh, that's in the news a lot right now. There's there's a lot of issues um, yes. with the solvency of those programs. We're going to we're going to touch on that as well. Good. Well, Greg, uh, this is information we all need. It absolutely is. Okay. Look forward to seeing you in just a little bit. We're Good. happy. Thanks we're, so we're much, really, Aaron. We're really excited to to be a part of this, guys. We I really appreciate you inviting me. Our our pleasure, believe me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.